Hey guys, hadn't had much time for videos, but uh, I've got to do a little quick one here, working on a carrier rooftop unit. There's the model number. Uh, it's got two circuits. The one I'm working on is the large circuit. It's got 44 pounds of 410A in it. Got the old field piece. The cover unit pulling it down here. What we're going to do, if you see that dryer closest to me, it's actually restricted to the point that uh, when it runs, it actually freezes the line when it comes out of the dryer. So it's actually doing all the metering for the uh, for the TXV. So you got two different circuits there. You can see the one that's got sweat on it's been running. Uh, when I came out and found the problem, I actually uh, turned this circuit off and wired it up to where it would just run that second stage, which is still, uh, actually still plenty large for this building. Uh, this is a school building and they always oversize this stuff. This is actually 35 pounds of, uh, or 35 tons of uh, cooling here. It's a beautiful day, Saturday morning. I don't want to work here when there's kids around, so just save this job for Saturday. But if you look at the size of that dryer, it's only a 16 cubic inch dryer. Uh, look on the box here. Well, they show the six. Basically, the 16s are good for maybe up to six tons, and they got it on this circuit with these two uh, 103,000 BTU compressors in tandem. So, I guess I was talking to uh, one of my buddies about it, and he said, Well, you know, it was clean when they started, but these compressors, the windings break down. So, I bought the biggest 5 8 uh, dryer that wasn't one you take apart. 5 8 uh, top size. So I'm going to uh, cut that one out, put this one in. Of course, I'll have to uh, pressure test and pull a vacuum, which will probably take a while on this thing. But uh, and then I'll put all this 410A back in it. This little thing sure helps. Uh, I had 10 pounds of ice in there when I started. It melted it pretty quick. Well, I think it took 20, 20 pounds before it melted. And the water's lukewarm right now, but I'm down to where I'm just pulling out vapor now. So it's not getting getting too hot. But I'll get you a shot as I go here just to make the video longer than three minutes and we'll go from there. Okay, we got the uh, all the refrigerant out. And here you can see the old and the new dryer. It's a bit size difference. But what I'm going to do, I'm cleaning up the copper on both places where I'm going to be brazing this thing back in before I cut it loose. Okay, I got my nitrogen hooked up. I actually took it before I hooked it onto the line and blew the leaves out from under where I'm going to be brazing here. But there's the new dryer in place. Got my arrows going the right direction. So what I'm going to do is grab my torches that I just carried up on the roof and uh, we'll get this puppy brazed in.
raised in and re-strapped with the original strap. I just used a little longer screws to secure it down. I'm going to uh, pressure test and then we can start our vacuum. Starting the vacuum, I've got the gas valve, the pilot valve open. It's pulling out a lot of air. It's about to slow down now. And then I can flip it down and start actually going into a deeper vacuum. Especially if you don't have any of those nice blue hoses. Okay, I just looked at the last video, the one where I started it to see how long it had taken. It took about eight minutes to get down. Uh, it's in 830 range, so it's uh, doing a pretty good job. I'm gonna run down to the uh, local McDonald's and grab a burger at the drive-through while that vacuum's running. Just wanted to show you I had my entire van up on this roof. Okay, back from lunch, down to 510. Got to work on the blower around here for a minute, so that'll give it a little bit longer to uh, to run. The uh, When I come out the other day, when I started it up, I, took, I opened the door here, and the motor was jumping around like crazy. And you've got four bolts here when you adjust your belt. You can see it's got newer belts on it. And the back two were completely out and gone. Um, I found one of them uh, and put it back in, but the other one, I'm not even sure, it's probably, it was on the back side, it's probably ran back through the unit there, but I brought a, uh, a new half inch bolt and nut to put on it and uh, get it, make sure it don't go anywhere. This thing moves 14,000 CFMs. Okay, she's been off for 30 minutes while I was screwing around with everything else, but uh, I've tucked my hoses off so I can crawl in here and actually, uh, get my refrigerant put in it. I'm going to, uh, I usually take my gauge off when it's running, but since this one was kind of in the middle of the circuit, I didn't want to let that much in. So I'm going to go ahead, it's time to clean this thing anyway. I'm going to go ahead and put the refrigerant in. And once it gets up to, uh, uh, you know, one or two PSI, I'll uh, unscrew this sensor. Not used to working on these big systems, but had her under vacuum and opened up the uh, valves on the gauge and it took 30 pounds um, without it running. I've uh, turned the high side of the gauges off and turned the uh, disconnect on. The blower fan is running. The thing has a pretty substantial delay when the power's been off before it'll come back on. I measured it the other day and it was about eight minutes. So in eight minutes, I should be able to uh, let it pull the rest of the refrigerant back into it through the suction side. Got the gauges hanging out of the door here. She's a choo now. The other day the suction pressure was about 35 PSI. Baby's making some moisture. It's about 70% humidity in there. The fan has no way to slow itself down when only one circuit's running. So you get no dehumidification set up like this. Uh, I'm going to actually leave it with both both uh, first and second stage hooked under the same uh, output on the uh, controller so that it will end up cutting both, both uh, systems on and get the coal, coal cold enough to do this. Now we may have short run times and we may have to do something about that, but she's making the water. Okay, I'm programming the uh, control. <laughs> I use the old Johnson Controls unitary controllers, which aren't made anymore. Uh, they changed out the network controllers to the new stuff, but uh, now you can't. You have to actually come to the location to uh, program the unitary controllers because it won't work through the uh, new network controllers. But at any rate, you can see the, the humidity when this thing started to come on was 70, that's actual this uh, analog input number three is actually for the humidity. Uh, it was 71.5% uh, when this cycle started and it's dropping it down you know, pretty quickly. However, they had the fan set to run continuously during Occupied 
And what will happen with that is when the compressors turn off, that coil is still very wet. And if you leave that big fan blowing across it, it's going to re-evaporate all that water that's in the coil and pump it right back into the building. So I had to come down and get the program out of this thing and change one of the questions and answers to fan cycled during occupy and standby. I had to change it to yes because it was on no and anytime it was occupied that fan was running uh, continuously. So we're going to see if that helps. Um, see cooling stage one is on but truly I've got cooling stage one and two on because I've got them both under the same uh, output there. And you can see that humidity just keeps on dropping, even though the zone temperature hadn't changed much. Uh, it's going to be heading for a zone temperature of 71.1, and currently we're on 72.6, so we'll get a pretty good cycle time out of this. The other thing, we actually did this when I was still here before trying to get the humidity down. We've got a side loop here, which basically says if the air conditioning, uh, the air conditioning zone and the humidity is above 50%, then activate uh, output number four. And you can see it's on right now to one. We could we could go in and edit that and make it say what it is and, and on or off instead of zero and one. But what that's doing is turning on about uh, 27 kW of electric heat. So what it's basically it's a, a poor man's reheat system. So when the humidity is above 50 percent which right now it's 63, then when the air conditioner is on, it's going to be cutting on part of the electric heat in order to temper that air to give you a longer run time. It's, it's crazy to have to do it this way, but I mean, the equipment's here and the building's here. There's just not a, another good option. The thing should have been about half that size. Here is the actual zone sensor, and it's got this slide bar, which is, uh, I think it gives us a I think we've got them set for about six degrees. Uh, the, if you were in the center, it would be set point. Down is three degrees cooler and up is three degrees warmer. So of course I've got it all the way down. This other one is actually the humidity sensor that I added to it back when I worked here. And that's what's giving us that input of the relative humidity in this space. Okay, we got down to 71.9 degrees and our humidity is down to 57.7. .7. So it, it goes 57.5, so it's still dropping. So by the time it gets down to 71.1, hopefully the humidity will be uh, down in the mid 50s. Okay, I just heard it click off. The system hadn't caught up yet, but it should refresh and tell us that the cooling stage one is off and there it goes for the fan. And we got down to 71.6 and 56% humidity. So what will happen now is the temperature is going to creep back up. And when it comes back on, I hope it will continue. It feels great out here. This is the best it's felt in a while. But by the time they come for class in the morning, I'm hoping it'll feel really nice in here. Okay, now that I've exited commissioning mode and it just the names are actually stored in this program name, not actually up in the controller. So I can go in and give these things a real name like uh, relative humidity. This guy reheat. Hmm, it must have a capital there. So maybe the next guy then might help him a little bit understand what's going on. 
that'll do it for me tonight. It's pizza time. Thanks for watching.